Thomas and Tracy enjoy helping out at the Bluesburg Steelworks. They love visiting their friends Phoebe and Ralph and giving them much needed help. Ralph has constantly kept busy running the manager about and shifting ladle cars into place while Phoebe takes on long journeys to Bluesburg West Junction and beyond. But the yard had many orders to fill for the next few weeks, and even the extra two engines weren't enough to keep things running. That was when Diesel, Ari, and Bert came in. Diesel was in charge of the docks at Gridinia Bay, while Ari and Bert had been brought in from the Sodor Ironworks for a period. Together, the engines had a known reputation for pranks and mischief making around other engines. They arrived one busy morning. Thomas and Tracy were arranging a freight train for Big Tim to bring out when they oiled into the main yard. Hello, Puffball, said Airy. So the big old steelworks can handle with a teapot on rails. Figured they'd send for some modern diesels to help with the extra workload. You'd be modern 70 years ago, quipped Ralph. Now, as manager's diesel of the Bluesburg Steelworks, we're gonna need you to... And a rusty matchbox on wheels for a boss. Boy, you really need proper diesels around here. Bert greasily chirped. Why, you? All right, said Phoebe coolly. Now that we've gotten to know each other, let's get to work. Diesel, dockyard deliveries. Ari and Bert, you're working the pier. And she confidently went back to the steelwork shed to work. The diesels did prove to help out a little bit, but many problems soon arose with their presence. They shoved trains into the wrong sidings, took any chance they got to make fun of or play tricks on Ralph and Tracy, and Diesel would bump Thomas or take the right away from him. Altogether, the three engines were gradually getting fed up with the diesel's trickery. Phoebe, on the other hand, wasn't particularly bothered. No matter what prank she got, she took it all in stride. Thank you for arranging my freight cars, Ari, she said to him after getting bumped with freight cars. I really needed the washdown, Bert, she said when shunted while taking on water. Your brakes need checking, she said when bumped by Diesel. All in all, the freight engine was proving to be very tough to break. And Diesel and his cronies were more determined than ever to push her to the edge. Next morning, Thomas and Phoebe were sent to Selgrib City with a heavy freight train. They were to be transferred to another train heading out for Pennsylvania in the afternoon. Make sure to mind yourselves while we're gone, puffed Phoebe, and mind yourselves if you have to go through Bluesburg West. Huh, said Diesel. We can handle that yard easily. And determined to prove they were capable, he requested that he, Ari, and Bert be coupled to the next train and heading out through there. There's a 12 o'clock express to go to Folston, but you'd better watch out there. It'll be rush hour. But the Diesels weren't thinking or listening. They were too busy thinking how clever they were to realize what they were getting themselves into. Nor had they been paying attention to the freight cars in the yard. Who are they to boss us around? Punting us like footballs around me gods. This is Phoebe's yard and Ralph's too. Let's teach him a lesson, boys. The Diesels were soon on their way with their heavy freight train. Although advised by the conductor to take at the very least a transfer caboose, they chose to take it as a triple header. The Diesels on the other railways have no trouble hauling it all at the front with no van, so why should we worry? But they had forgotten that Diesels on the other railway have special devices to minimize the usage of brake vans and cabooses. Bluesburg West is a very dangerous yard for a careless engine. There's few signals located throughout it, and engines must take care and pay close attention when entering or exiting the yards. Engines must always be prepared to give off four short whistles to alert the signalman in the control tower that they are there. But Diesel and the twins hadn't bothered to remember. They just hurried through the tunnel to the junction. The car's chance had come. On! 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 They yelled, and with a mighty shove, the cars took the diesels by surprise and surged the speeding engines into the junction. The signalmen were shocked and put in a full-on panic, frantically trying to avoid a collision. Two mainline diesels nearly hit them at the entrance, they almost hit Callie at an intersection, and Douglas nearly lost his tender. Phew, said Diesel, we're home free now. But they weren't. They hadn't accounted for Alea, a little shunting engine who was pushing a line of freight cars to go to Groffman Harbor. She was entering the main line. Oh no! Screamed Diesel as he shut his brakes hard on. Then, disaster struck. Diesel was on his side next to the crash, dazed, confused, and bruised. Some of Alea's cars had been thrown right off the track, and with Ari and Bert derailed on the switch, no one from the main line could get into the junction. Hang on! 
one, shouted Aaliyah. I'll fetch a crane and send for a few others. By the time the mess was cleared, Phoebe and Thomas were returning from their big run. Phoebe was a little bit entertained from the debacle. Well, 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 three diesels too big for their buffers couldn't manage steel cars, eh? Diesel was fuming. Well, if you treat wagons and engines like that, then it's gonna bite you in the tail lamp, she said firmly. Right, shall we try and haul these cars to the yards? If it helps a bit, said a tired but still willing Thomas. It took some time to tidy up the mess, but soon everything was put right again, and Thomas and Phoebe hauled away the wagons to Faustin. What about Diesel, Larry, and Bert? Well, it wasn't long before the Calvo works set them back up and running again. But they don't mess with steel cars anymore, because they know they'll try to fight back. Mike was cross. The thin controller had assigned him to ballast duties for being naughty, and Mike hated being stuck at the mines all day. He found it rather boring. One morning, Mike arrived at Chipperton Wharf with a loaded train of ballast. He saw Duncan, who was getting his train loaded. Morning, Mike. What's up? I feel overworked. That's what's up, huffed Mike. I've been going up and down the line all day, stuck with the ballast trains and all because I burst a safety valve and started an elderly woman. Duncan pondered for a moment. You know, if I was on your wheels, I would have probably taken a break up on the coast at Birmingham. You know, have the ocean breeze in your face. Your line does run up there after all. And with that, Duncan set off for the quarry. This gave Mike an idea. All that week, Mike tried everything to sneak off to Barnaber. He tried to sneak ballast cars and lumber cars out as a construction delivery. He tried to run off light engine on his own and even begged the yard manager to let him go there. At last, he finally got a job on the resort end of the line, but not the one he had hoped for. An express train needs to be arranged at the Swahili Water Park Resort for a group of tourists. I need you to bring them some couches so they have enough for the train to carry them. Yes, sir, said Mike, but he had a plan. Mike knew of one carriage that had a faulty coupler pin on it, so he coupled that to the front of his train. As he trundled out with five heavy covered carriages, he felt the pin push against him as he went downhill. Not yet, he said. We've got to wait until we reach the resort. As he approached the resort station, Scott the Express Tank Engine was waiting for Mike's extra coaches. As he pulled into the platform, he put his plan into motion. With the pin loosened enough, left on the platform were the carriages for the train, and off went Mike. What the? said Scott. Slow down, Mike. 
said his driver. We just passed by the station. But Mike wasn't listening. He was bolting it to the Bermaburg coast. Stations and shunting yards flashed by as his driver fought for control of the regulator. At the big station in Bermaburg, there were a pair of buffers on the other side of the turntable, just at the tail end of the shunting yards. Mike was still not paying any attention until he saw the buffers. Then everything happened at once. Mike found himself standing on the sand instead of the rails with the remains of the buffers behind him. Don't worry, Mike, called out his driver. I'll go phone for help. Mike sighed. There had been a break, but not the one he had hoped for. Back at the Swahili Water Park Resort, Scott was still confused about what had happened as he backed down onto his coaches. Suddenly, he heard a blast of whistles and the clattering of equipment as Rashira and Grace the Crane roared past. Clear the tracks! shouted Rashira. Derailed engine at Barmabar Beach! Oh, mind your speed! called Grace. My gears are rattling! As Mike was lifted back onto the rails by Rashira and Grace, he saw that Rex and Bert were also there. They'd come to help repair the tracks and buffers beyond the turntable. Well, Mike, you said you wanted a break from all the work you've been getting. <laughs> but we never thought you would have it this way finished Bert. Well, if I must admit, it was all right, said Mike. But I didn't think the only break that happened would be to a pair of buffers. The three engines laughed in agreement. Libby is a sturdy tank engine in charge of McCrackenton Freight Depot. It's near a small town just near the hills beyond Calville and Faustin, and often gets deliveries from all over the railway. But the depot is not as big as others on the railway, which makes her feel very uptight about it. If it's not Libby's way, then it's the highway. One night, Livy was cooling her firebox for the night when Jebediah, the engine who pulled the Calville milk train, eased into the sheds. He was a very kindly engine, but he was rather worn out compared to the other engines. Ugh, keep your soot off my tanks, old timer, snapped Livy. I've got an image to keep up with my yard. I'm sorry, Livy, puffed Jebediah, but my chug isn't what it used to be. My rods have been jamming up for the last little bit, so I've had to burn more to puff more. 
But why are you here now? I'm glad you asked, said Mrs. T. Mark, who ran the depot and was preparing to head home for the night. We've just gotten a contract to store and deliver dairy products from all over the railway beginning tomorrow. Livy was shocked. Her yard a dairy yard? But, but why? Can't that Cormac keep track of cheese with his silly prawns? I'm sorry, Livy, but we finalized the agreement. But it will keep our yard busy, and it'll open up a lot of opportunities if we do it well. But Livy didn't think so. Her yard had to be the way she wanted it. Next morning, the first load started to crawl in with Jebediah's first train. He brought churns of milk from the Gradenia Bay and Calville Dairies. Then Toodle delivered cream from Inkblotta Towers Creamery. Then Emily delivered butter and eggs from Cliffstone Farms. And Olwen delivered the biggest load of all, cheeses from the Selgra Bay Cheese Company. Every cheese you could imagine was packed into vans. Cheddar, mozzarella, feta, Swiss, string, stilted, and even Wensleydale. The vans and refrigerated cars all packed the yards. Siding after siding seemed to be moving vans out and then vans in. Livy couldn't stand it. My yard should be an industrial space with construction materials, containers, and important things. Not a storage yard for a cheese festival. Did someone say cheese? And the more and more freight came in, the more and more she got tired of it. And she didn't treat poor Jebediah any nicer. Especially when his rods finally gave out when parking home at the sheds one night. Oh, gosh darn it. Oh, fantastic, she cracked. Now what are we going to do about the Calville train? Don't fret about it, said Mrs. T. Mark. I'm sure Mrs. Ella will find another engine for the job. Now you'd better find a flat car and get poor Jebediah over to the works. And so she did. But her words flew around in her boiler. Find another engine to do the job. Find another engine to do the job. And that's when Livy made a plan. A firelighter comes every morning to ready the engines for the day. After the firelighter left this morning, Livy put her plan into motion. She rounded up every dairy car in the yard and coupled them all together. Then, with a bit of strain, she began to haul the cars off down the line to Bluetsburg West Yard. They've got so many sightings there that that little blue pressure cooker won't mind having some extra work to do. But she'd forgotten about Faustin. Faustin has two main line connections a passenger line that leads up to the big station and the small commuter station, and a freight line that goes through the goods yard. Livy was hoping she'd be taken onto the passenger line where she usually went with her traffic, but the signal man hadn't known about Livy, and she was kept on the goods line, following a slow freight before her. Oh, bother, she said. Miss T. Mark will be finishing her breakfast and driving to the yards by now. But that was about to be the least of her worries, for there came a sound that rattled through her vents. Oh no! She cried. It's the Sunrise Skyrocket! She tried to go faster, but there were too many cars behind her. She thought she would be okay, but just as the train was halfway across the points, two cars were in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Tracy arrived with workmen to help clean up the mess. Miss T. Mark also arrived onto the scene of chaos. Cheese and butter lay all over the track. The worst of all was Livy. She was splattered with cheese all across her side tanks. And as if she didn't make herself look silly enough, two wheels of Stilton were stuck and melting on her two whistles. You're very lucky that only a small part of the deliveries are being delayed thanks to you. But I hope you understand now that there are times when you should talk to us about concerns. But thinking cheese and milk cars make your yard look silly is not one of them. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Once you've been cleaned up and mended, you can take care of Jebediah's milk train until he's repaired. And you learn to think of more than what you'd like the yard to be run like. Yes, ma'am.
In the fuzzin' country of Protonia, there's all kinds of machines that help to keep things running on time. Each one having their own special job to do. But every now and then, new machines come to help run a new part of the railway. Like Audrey, the Super Seaside Express engine. Audrey is quite a blend for an engine. She's got as many wheels as Edward, is almost as big as Gordon, and has a cat like Livy. Audrey's a super strong engine too. She can pull as many as 12 coaches. That's almost three times more than your average little engine on Crotonia. Audrey may get swept up in her thoughts and imagination sometimes, but her creative attitude and care for her friends, along with the new poems and tales she makes on her travels, makes her one mighty machine. Welcome to Crotonia, Audrey! <laughs> And off to the loading dock, I assume? Yeah, and we gotta get going, Michelle. The boat's probably waited ages for us. All right, all right, cool your pistons, Grace. We'll get it done in twice the time any old crane can. Well, good luck, you two. Oh, and uh, mind the... Ew! Ew. Oh, what is that smell? Oh. Pong. <laughs> real pong. It's like two tons of old boiler sludge mixed with one ton of engine ash and two wagons of stinky cheese all boiled together in an oven. I'm telling you, it's the worst smell I've smelled since the oh, holy hydraulics. Look out below. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm so sorry. I wasn't paying attention and I bungled it up. No worries. At least to solve that fishy situation. <laughs> Hi, you two. You got my load of salmon to take to the Birdmember Station Cafe? Pistons there, Ralph. We're going as fast as we can. Cut us some slack. We're on a very tight schedule, Leonard, so I want things done, and I want things done on time. Those slag cars should be empty by now. And Dip, put the pedal to the metal. I'm on it, boss. I'll take a shortcut across the rails. Not again, not again, not again, not again! Look 
got it, I got it. Why don't you watch where you're going, Puffball? Huh? What the? Ha, 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 so. so, uh, Ralph? Now that we're here, now that we're witnessing this, would now be a bad time to tell you that I think things work a little too well around this yard? Quiet, you. Huh? What was that? Well, what do you know? Looks like those slide cars have all been emptied. Isn't that what you wanted, Ralph? I... I think I mean a minute. There was a lot to take in at once. Hey, Dip! That was really something you pulled off there. Only, do you think you could do it again? How about you unload those pipe wagons for us? Oh, oh, oh. 